And Jerry Jones said that Dak is evolving into a quarterback similar to TB12. But last year during Super Bowl week, Cowboys wide receiver Amari Cooper had an interesting comment on which QB he'd rather play with. Take a listen. I don't want to play with Tom Brady. Uh, I want to beat Tom Brady. Uh, I want to play with Dak Prescott. Um, and I believe that we can get the job done. Remember that. Uh, Shannon, what do you read into this? I love it. I love that he said this because so many times you hear guys skip, who wouldn't love to play with Tom Brady? He's just a GOAT. He won six Super Bowls. Uh, 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 Mars said, no. Nah. <laughs> I like what I got. My guy and moving forward, my guy going to be better moving forward than that guy. Mm -hmm. Is that what he's saying? That's what he's saying. Good. Love it. I, do, I, bet, yep. I bet you do love it. Mm -hmm. Skip, that's what you want your guy to skip. You don't look. Being in the league and going to Pro Bowls and getting an opportunity to play with some of the great quarterbacks, the Marinos, the, mm -hmm. I played with Marino in the Pro Bowl, Montana, Warren Moon, Jim Kelly. I played with all those guys. Yeah, it was nice. Mm -hmm. But what I look like, Skip, man, whoo, I sure wish I could play with Marino. Mm -hmm. Man, I wish I could play with Warren Moon. <laughs> nah, you don't say that. Don't say and that. what he said okay. is that I want to beat Tom Brady. I want to play with him. Mm -hmm. I want me and my guy, I want to play with my guy, which is Dak Prescott, mm -hmm. and I want to beat Tom Brady. Yep. See, that's what you want to have your receiver say. Sure. Not bring a guy some cleats, not heap praise uh, on him like he's Caesar. You know, we come to praise Caesar. That's true. The cleats. Not to bury him. Not to bury him. Mm -hmm. No, but man, if it wasn't so. I would, mm -hmm. But anyway, you know, Skip, oh, oh Mark Antony, or Asia. Wow. You know, Skip, you remember that? Reciting. I was good at it, Skip. You guys are Shakespearean. just mm. so well read. <laughs> Skip, it would be Don't a Don't get me started. <laughs> Skip, it would every be. Every time Shakespeare comes up on a Jeopardy category, oh, oh, you looks at me because oh, I'm out. Oh, you run the category, oh, huh? Really? Yeah. But see, you I just blurt not answer. You got to ring the buzzer. That. You got to let. That you is ring. the key to it. That is the key. I know, because you did it. Uh, yeah, I had to learn the hard way. That's why I would be afraid. Ernestine always says, you could just. Kill Jeopardy. If you go on Celebrity Jeopardy, I said, I don't know if I could do this. Yeah, you gotta wait till he has to wait till he finishes reading the question in his entirety. Does that because, if you, because if you buzz in, it locks you out. I never even thought about that. Yes. But anyway, Skip, it would be a problem, Skip. Huh. For me, I could imagine me playing, you know, me and John, and he's like, man, I sure would love to throw Tony Gonzalez some passes. Mm -hmm. Being coach. Yeah, you might have to do it with one eye, because I'm gonna hit you in one of the other ones. So, no, you don't do that, Skip. You don't show up your quarterback and talk about you want to play with somebody else. You don't do that. Mm. And Amari Cooper, I, lo I love what he said. I love the conviction because she tried to set him up. Now, that was a, 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 a Boston area reporter. Yes. So she tried to look at him because, you know, they want, they want everybody. Oh, everybody want to play Tom Brady. You see, yeah. everybody. Oh, Amari Cooper and, and Julio Jones and yada, yada, yada. So uh -huh. she tried to set him up. But Amari said, nah, I don't want to play with Tom Brady. I, I want to play with that. Mm. And we want to beat Tom Brady. Mm. So I loved it. Mm. Amari Cooper might be one of my new faves. Really? Yeah. Oh. He better be your fave on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So I loved it twice as much as you loved <laughs> it for you this did. reason. And you touched upon it, and so did Jenny. I'm pretty sure that Amari, this is at the Super Bowl, right. I'm sure Amari's agent or manager or PR person warned him you're about to speak to Nesson, mm -hmm. New England Sports Network. Mm -hmm. Be ready for Nesson questions, <laughs> as in Brady questions, Correct. as in Patriot questions. Right. So I'm pretty sure he'd been prepped, and he still showed no fear and, and blurted out, I want to beat Tom Brady. Yeah. I believe That's that most great receivers would give more of a PC answer mm -hmm. The, 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 Who the, wouldn't want to play with Tom Brady? Yeah, that kind of an yeah. answer. Or, hey, it would be an honor to play with yes. Tom. You could, you could then say, I love my quarterback, but it would be an honor. Who, who wouldn't right. want to? Yes, right. that sort of You're thing. Right. And he just went right to, I want to beat Tom Brady. I want to play with Dak Prescott. I believe that we can get the job done. Right. And then I, I want to double down on this because he did in a subsequent interview on the same, right in the same media session, there, you, you just walk around walk all around. the different booths. They got to be 500 meters. 500 booths. <laughs> and he stopped by the NFL Network booth and he was interviewed. And the first question seemed to offend him. And I don't have the sound. I'm just going to read you the okay. answer to it. If we could see this. He was asked, do, do you think Dak Prescott is a franchise quarterback? And his answer was, of course, like he was a little offended by the question. You don't see that? He's a winner. I love Dak. He's a born leader from what I can see. He's going to put it all on the line. And all the close games we had this year, he was the one making those big plays leading us to victory. 
I just like everything about Dak. Mm -hmm. It's the same theme that I talk about almost every day on this show and have for three and a half years. Yes. Sure. It's this perception out there, maybe started and led by you, fed by you, mm. which is, is Dak really the answer at quarterback? It's why I continue to say most over-criticized, under-appreciated quarterback I've ever closely observed or talked about on television or written about is Dak Prescott. And that's the answer that you just got from Amari. He loves this guy. And this guy and Amari have a, a connection, a deep sort of soul connection that manifests itself on the field. And it's as strong as any connection you it can is. talk with. You had one with John Elway, mm -hmm. and we can go all through Marvin Harrison and Peyton or whoever you want to yeah. talk about. We can go on and on. We can go back to Drew Pearson and Roger Staubach in the good old days with Montana the Cowboys. and Rice. Montana and right Rice. Right now is Breeze and Michael Thomas. Okay, you can okay. you can go there. But on the depth of connection on and off the field, there's there's nothing stronger than this one. Maybe Drew and Michael okay. have as strong, but but this this one I don't doubt. And the reason this is so significant this week is, guess who plays for the other team? Stephon Gilmore. Stephon Gilmore. Mm -hmm. Last year, Stephon Gilmore finished the year ranked number one by pro football focus among all corners. Mm -hmm. You would say he's as good a shutdown corner as we have in the yeah, league right yeah. now, right? He might be the best right now. He just might be the best. Mm -hmm. His grade this year isn't quite as good as last year, but we could nitpick right. that. Right now, ranked number one of all the right wide receivers in overall grade by Pro Football Focus is Amari Cooper. So arguably, we have one versus one. Uh, one versus one, at least in grading, mm -hmm. route running. You always say, is, is there a better route runner than Amari? No, he's, and, he's up there to the top. It's good. Okay. You, good. You'll see. Okay, and we saw the connection between Dak and Amari against your Vikings was just extraordinary. Sure. Where Dak's like falling out of bounds and throws it sidearm up the, the boundary yeah. and, and he catches it out of bounds. Yeah. It's just a wavelength. It's it's something that, that's pretty extraordinary yes. to me. And and again, it, it's not like it, it, it's not like he's eating, you know, burning up the league because Amari hasn't played that much. Like but he's Skip, been he's, in and out of the but league. But Skip, he's still fourth in receiving yards. No, he, well, he's 16th in catches. Yeah, so but I'm saying, but okay. receiving yards, okay, My, only Michael Thomas, uh, uh, Godwin, mm -hmm. Mike Evans is in front of him. Okay, but if he had been healthy from camp oh, yeah. on, like he's had a heel issue, mm -hmm. then some kind of it manifested to a foot, and then it, it turned into some kind of knee issue. But it just goes to show you how, technic how technically mm -hmm. sound he is, mm -hmm. that he doesn't have to rely on speed. Nope. See, when you technically sound, mm -hmm. you can still get open even though you don't have the blazing speed. I don't think he has blazing no, speed. No, no. He doesn't have, no, Tyreek and some of these other guys, no. but he's so sound, and that's why he'll be able to play for a long, long time. The guys like Steve Steve Largent, that had to skip. You know, he had no speed. Yep. But he still had, when he retired, he had the most receiving touchdowns mm -hmm. in NFL history. Yep. And he was able to do what he did because he was so technologically sound and, it, and savvy in his route running skill. That's why Marge is able to do what he's doing, dealing with the issues, his lower legs, would you say a heel, ankle, whatever it is, knee. That's why he's able to continue to still get open because he relies on other things other than speed. Okay. And then to frame this one more time, this wasn't Amari talking this week. This was Amari talking at last year's Super Bowl. So he hadn't even seen the Dak we've seen continue to rise this year. But he I saw, saw it for, in practice. He, but he saw it for 10 games last <laughs> year. And I'm going to defend my guy Dak one more time because I thought those 10 games were extraordinary. Nobody else did. You certainly didn't. But I saw a guy over those 10 games lead the whole league in completions. Mm -hmm. I saw a guy against the Eagles at Jerry World in the fourth quarter in overtime throw for 243 yards. He completed 17 of 20, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. That's the guy Amari's talking about when you ask him, is he a franchise quarterback after mm -hmm. that year? And again... They won the division again, so they, they've won the division two out of three years. And you're asking Amari Cooper, is he a franchise quarterback? Wouldn't you be offended if you're yeah. Amari Cooper, yeah. right? Yeah, well, the rapport that I've had with the guy after only eight, nine games. But, Skip, I believe in his, in his heart of hearts that he believed moving forward that that's going to be a better quarterback. Now, he doesn't know how long, to, you know, Tom says he wants to play the 45, 47, whatever, whatever it is. He believes, I believe in his heart of hearts, he believed that Dak Prescott, from that point that he said that moving forward, would be a better quarterback than Tom Brady. I believe he thought that too and still thinks that. Absolutely. Yep.
and believes that will be the case Sunday. Yes. Oh, all right, Amarina's guy. He better, he better be. His chance. But, but think about Belichick's advantage. He can put Stefan on Amari, and then you can double anybody you want. To I double. mean, I would like to see Amari at full strength because I don't believe because. As a route runner, see, Stephon Gilmore does really well against big guys. He does. That doesn't have lateral quickness. Yep. Dude, a hey, Amari, mm -hmm. lateral quickness, start, stop. Mm -hmm. He's as good as it is. Yeah. That's why Gilmore would struggle against a guy like A.B., yep. a guy that can start that, I, I got it. that punt return kind of ability. Well, this is going to be the game within the game. It is. These two. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, he's definitely yeah. following. But I, what I would do, Skip, I would take Gilmore and put him on, on, on uh, the second guy, Gallup, and then I would double Amari. You could. Okay. You could, but that's not their MO. That's no. not how they've been doing it. Because a lot of times, that's what Dallas, Dallas would sometimes, and if the guy started going off, they would take Dion, put him on the second guy, and then they would roll coverage and double every, and double the number one guy. But then Dion's like, oh, no, this ain't me. Although I would give, say, give, give me Jerry. At the end of the Eagles game, a lot of times they put Stefan on Zach Ertz. Ertz yes. Because they just said, well, he's your guy, right? That's, mm -hmm. And that's what you got. That's, and guys, if you're that dog, Skip, you want that challenge. I don't care what he, I don't care what position you he plays. If you're a, a DB, if the guy's a tight end, he's a wide out. No, 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 bro, you ain't finna get all that. Get these cheap yards and have us looking bad. Let me shut this down. Mm. Well, it's interesting you bring up the Eagles there. Mm. Uh, uh -huh. I'm not sure you're going to like this one. Who is to blame for Carson Wentz's statistical decline this season? Because mm. it's happening. Mm. You can't deny it.